Hello, it's Joe from Minerva. Um, I'm here today to show you how to treat your pattern once you get it. Um, I've got the new Lyra pattern by Tilly and the Buttons and I've got to make a few choices about how I'm going to cut it out. Am I going to trace it? Am I going to cut my side straight away? Um, am I going to trace off two patterns? Am I going to make a trial to see which one fits the best? So once you get your pattern, there's a few choices to make before you actually cut out your fabric. The fabric I've chosen to make a Lyra dress is this viscose linen. It's got a really nice texture. That sort of linen texture look. But it's not stiff like linen, it's really, really forgiving. So it'll gather really well for the tiers. That's what I'm hoping that when I get my gathers on each tier level, that I'm going to get a really nice drape from the gathers. It's just about strong enough for collar and the button band, but I'll need to put some interfacing on it. And it's got a little bit of give, a little bit of stretch in one direction. So not that way, but this way. So I'll make sure that that bit goes around my bodice. So this is what I've chosen. I've got three metres. I'm not a fan of an animal print, but this one has a sort of pebbles on the beach look and it comes in quite a few different colours. So this is what I'm going to be trying to work with. But before I cut it, I want to make sure that I've got the right pattern size. If you've had a few pattern disasters in the past because you've made something and it didn't fit right or you think you might have chosen the wrong size, it's really worth investing in some tracing products and materials that will help you trace off patterns. You can try and trace them off on baking paper, but it's curly, it doesn't stick properly. Um, and just a few things bought now will help you to get the most out of your patterns because patterns are an investment and you want to try and get the most out of them you can especially when you might have a pattern that has more than one view so the tilly and the buttons pattern has um, a short sleeve a long sleeve and one without tears so there's different skirt options so it's worth thinking about getting something to make this pattern give you the most that it can give you I mean a particular area of tracing patterns at the moment because my daughter has just reached size one in Tilly and the Button patterns and now I'm wishing that I'd traced off some pieces of some of my previous ones because I cut them at a, um, a UK 12-14 and I'm sometimes on a curve I can't cut out the size one piece so I'm going to show you which pieces to treat in which way when you open the pattern because some you can use one technique to get a different size and some you pieces on a pattern you can use a different technique. So I'm going to go over to the cutting table and show you some products that are listed below. So you'll see them in the uh, little run underneath the video. The reason you might want to trace a pattern and get yourself set up for tracing is um, if you want to make multiple sizes from one pattern, then you can trace off different sizes. So I've made bridesmaids dresses and I needed to make a younger girl size and an older girl size. So I made sure that I used the pattern to the best that I could. Um, I've got vintage patterns, so it's really good to trace off a vintage pattern because sometimes vintage sizing is a little bit tricky. So um, I would trace off the vintage pattern and I've kept that little piece of fashion history um, and I've not cut into it. And then I'm on my traced one and I can make alterations on there. You can also use tracing off pattern pieces as a way to make a trial for a pattern that you've not made before. So if you think that you might need to make an adjustment to a pattern rather than changing the paper one that's your original, you can change, you can trace it out, make a trial, try it, go back to your traced version, make some alterations. And so you, you have the transition then between um, the, the one that you've traced is the one that you're altering and then the original stays the same. Starting with the easy pieces, I can cut the pocket piece because that hasn't got any size differences on it. So that's the same whether you cut size one, size five, size eight. So that one, I'm just going to cut that out. So I don't need any tracing options for that one. There's a waist tie, which I might use, I might not, I don't know yet. And this one is only adjusted by length. So I'm going to cut a size five for myself. 
but I know that if I wanted to make this dress in a size 6, UK size 6, I could just change the length of that. So in cutting, cutting out my fabric terms, that pattern piece doesn't need any more treatment or tracing because I can just adjust the length by folding it. And the same for the tier panels. So these are the same um, length, but they're just adjusted by width. So I'm going to have, I've cut it out to its full size and I'm going to have size five. But I know I haven't damaged the pattern for cutting a smaller size because I can just fold on this seam. So some pieces you can use a folding technique when you've got straight edges and some pieces don't need any cutting changes at all. The button band um, piece that needs interfacing has um, a slight kink in it here. So I've cut a slit all the way to size one because I know that's the size I might want in the future. And I'm going to fold back size five because that's what I'm cutting now. So I can still get that slight V shape and I could do the same if I wanted to cut size one, but I'm not affecting the shape of what I'm cutting out. So some just need a little slit to get you to a, a pivot point or a place where you can fold. Depending on how much um, tracing paper you have, um, you might want to trace the sleeve piece. I'm going to go for this slash method. So I've cut it out at size five because I think that's the biggest size that I would need. So I might go down a size from there. And then if I need to, I can fold a curved edge to size one if I needed size one. So I could keep folding. But then if I wanted to go back and make myself the dress again or a dress in a different view, I could fold it back out again. So that's another method. And that's where you fold the pattern pieces on a curve. You make these little slashes. It is much easier with a Tilly and the Buttons pattern because it's made out of real paper. That method's a little bit damaging on a tissue pattern because the paper's a little bit more delicate. So that method works really well on a solid paper pattern. So on the front and back bodice or pieces that have got more curves, pieces that may have darts or different markings, they need to be traced onto a new sheet of paper because we can't just fold things like that because we would start to get more and more inaccurate as we folded around curves and straight lines and we've got a few more markings to make on these. So this is where you can get some pattern tracing paper. It's quite good when it's got the squares on because then you can mark grain lines really well with it. You can make sure that you get your straight line on the fold on a straight line. You can get a much more accurate pattern piece with this. This one is by um, Hemline. It's squared pattern paper. It's a nice, nice big piece. You can also buy a roll of it, 10 metres, which I use. And it seems an investment, but actually it lasts like a couple of years, depending on how many patterns you're tracing off. But I tend to only trace off the pieces that I know I can't make a good job of um, just changing with a fold. The hemline paper is a bit stronger than tissue, so um, you could tape it to a window and put your pattern behind so that you can see it better. Um, I like to just use a highlighter pen or a felt tip pen and mark out the size that I want. And then when I put it underneath, I can see this, you can't, I'm afraid, sorry. So when I put it behind, I can trace through here on a flat surface rather than trying to take things to a window. So I'm going to trace that off and then I'm going to show you the finished piece, but you'll see how you've saved the pattern to make another size. So there we are. We use some pattern weights to hold it down. I've marked all of the notches and transferred everything from the pattern. I always use the length and shorten line because I'm short waisted. So I've made sure I've put that on and I've labelled it to make sure I know which size it is because obviously I haven't got the little markings now that show the different sizes. So that piece is for me. 
but I could cut any other size off here by drawing a line with a different coloured felt tip pen. Another technique you could use if you not got big sheets of paper left or you've run out of your roll a little bit is to use a tracing wheel and it's got um, little spikes so you you're piercing through the paper and it makes tiny holes in the fabric it's okay if you've got a fabric that's plain it's quite sometimes quite tricky to see it on a busy print but you need to do it onto the reverse of the fabric so i've just got a piece to show you so this is the front bodice because i've got the back one so you can transfer markings straight from your pattern onto your fabric and then when you've made the little holes which I can see here then I will use my marker pen to mark the pattern piece onto the fabric might take a little bit more time but again, I know I'm getting exactly the pattern and I'm not cutting the pattern and so it becomes not usable for another size. That's helping me to trace off really accurately this other size. So you can see here that I'm getting the pattern straight onto my fabric ready for cutting. So a tracing wheel might be something you've already got and you've thought, oh, I've always wondered what that's for. Or if you think that's a method that you'd quite like because you use multi-sizes from your patterns, that's a, a good idea. Some pattern companies don't include seam allowances in their patterns. Um, if you trace them out of a magazine, they're trying to save space to get all of the pattern pieces nested onto sheets of paper. So then you need to ensure that when you cut out, that you don't cut out without the seam allowances. And this little tool is great for that. So if you particularly like a style of magazine's clothes and you want to cut out, but you want to make sure you get a good seam allowance, then this is a marking tool by Prim which rolls out through tiny little holes in this wheel here, chalk from a little canister in here. So in here is a refillable canister of chalk. That one's still got a little bit left in it. And I use this if I'm tracing off an item of real clothes. So if my daughter's pyjamas fit, but I just need to add some length, then I'll draw around her pyjama pieces and I'll use this to get a seam line. And that's great. Then I realised you could get one with a little add-on and that means that you can add different seam allowances. So you can add a 1.5, a 2.5 or a 4, depending on uh, what you're making. I normally use 1.5. So then, if I drew around an item of her clothes and I was making a replica, then the wheel would follow the edge of the paper. And then I would get a fresh line, 1.5 centimetres away from the seam allowance. So now... I've got this is my finished line and this is my cutting line and then I've got this 1.5 seam allowance here so there's different techniques depending on what you're using so that's the finished hem there just drawing it on with my other chalk pencil just so you can see it a bit more so then I would know that that's where I cut along there and that's where I would sew along there. So this is a handy tool because it marks out seam allowances. So if you're a particular fan of a pattern designer that doesn't allow seam allowances, this one will trace off seam allowances. This one was one without the stick. I've had that one quite a while, but this is the new one that I've had. You can trace in wheel straight through the paper pattern at the right size onto your fabric. 
you can hold it up to the window and make a complete replica copy of the pattern piece or you can do different sizes with different colours and trace them through. There's one more technique I want to show you for tracing and marking darts. Finally, a tracing product you might like to try is Dressmaker's Carbon Paper and it's got a sort of sticky substance here. You need to mark it on the back of fabric because it does wash out but I wouldn't really want to have that those markings on the front. And that's really good for marking internal markings like darts or um, I've made a pyjama top with all pin tucks on it and I had to mark all the lines for the pin tucks. And what you do is you make a sandwich of the wrong side of your fabric, the carbon paper touching it, and then the pattern. And then you will use a tool. It's not a tracing wheel one. It's got stumpier edges. And you press through all of these layers. And it's like you're tracing and pressing off a line of that colour onto your fabric. I can't find my little tool right now, so I'm just going to show you um with a pen so i would like size five so i'm going to draw a size five line i would like you could trace your whole pattern with it if you like this if you like it and you try it so you can take a whole pattern piece And I'll show you what it looks like underneath. So there you are, look, there's in yellow, because that's what colour the carbon paper was, you, you're marking through the pattern. So there's quite a few different ways to trace. I've shown you little snippets of it, but um, you might have a way that you use, you might have a way that you think, oh, that would have been better for something. So to have a few different techniques is quite useful because some patterns call for different types of tracing technique. So I've used my traced off pieces to make a muslin of just the back and the two front face pieces. And I found out a few things. The darts are a little low. So I'm going to move those because if I move that up to there, it's in a better place. My shoulder seams are in just the right place. They're not sticking out. I've got a 1.5 seam allowance to take off there as well. The length is just right. It's a, a gathered waist and it hangs quite uh, loose fitting from the waist so there's plenty of space there the button band will cross over here so my first change is the dart so I've traced the original dart like this and I'm going to move it up and I measured how much and I'm going to redraw that I'm going to do it in a different line I wouldn't normally use a pen this thick, but I'm just doing that so that you can see. Okay. And then you'll have to true up that side seam again. Because you're going to have a little peak sticking out there to allow for your dart and you're going to take that off. So that's going to be my new... that's going to be my new dart line there. If you're new to sewing, you might want to join the Minerva Club and kit yourself up with some really good sewing supplies. It really does help to make the process smooth when you're using the right materials. If you'd like to have a go at making the Lyra, um, it's on the list below. I'm wearing a Linden sweatshirt. Um, this is a summer weight one and it's made from a Jersey t-shirt material, not sweatshirt material. And this is a piece of viscose chalet on the front. And it was uh, a little piece left over from something. And I just loved it so much that I had just enough to cut the front. So the front is pattern piece 
and then the rest is made from a t-shirt material and it's light and it's like a long sleeve t-shirt more than a sweatshirt but it's a really versatile pattern I do make a lot of Zindler sweatshirts that's it for today thanks for watching I hope you get to make a toile and try and get the best fit that you can on your garments that you're making try and trace off the main pieces try and get the shoulders to be the right width you can change the position of your darts you can make sure that you get the right body length and by tracing off the main pattern pieces you'll be able to get that really good fit